it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a really fun and practical project. We are in the middle of a very hot summer here in North Idaho. I just got back from Michigan. It's super hot and humid there. <laughs> and I found myself constantly wanting to put my hair up and cool my neck. And I thought, you know what? Um, let's do a fun project for trying to keep ourselves cool in the middle of summer, we're working in the garden or maybe we're just doing chores outside. This is called the cooling neck wrap. So fun to make. Everyone's going to be wanting one of those. So just get ready for lots of requests. And they're a great scrap buster. We all know at the end of projects, we have scraps of fabric. Making one of these takes only a four and a half inch by 42 to 43, 44 inch long piece of fabric. We also have scrap packs. If you like to get surprised with a nice, beautiful array of fabrics, you can always pick those up. Very affordable too. So a uh, free download, be sure to grab that. Um, and I'm gonna show you how fun and easy it is to make that. And this is actually based on a product from miracle Grow um, called Water Storing Crystals. This is one of the neck cooling wraps. I love them. Um, and once they give their hydration, they get nice and flat again. Um, and you can just keep rehydrating them. I've heard people say um, they put them in a uh, plastic bag and put them in the refrigerator so they're even colder. So just an idea. All right, let's get started. With your four and a half inch by width of fabric cut of fabric, go ahead and remove those selvages. So you just have the beautiful fabric. I could not resist choosing Bliss Basics from Northcott for this. I love that there's an array of colors. So if you're making these for women or men, there is not, a, you're gonna do well picking this collection. Um, and I love that they have so many beautiful colors. And of course here, I've got my purples and I have my mossy greens. I just love, um, they just feel like they're part of nature. I really love this collection. Your first step will be to take your fabric and with about a half inch seam allowance, it doesn't need to be perfect at a half inch, you'll just go ahead and press that to the wrong side of the fabric. Now we will take that full length of fabric and we're just going to fold that in half and go ahead and pin well. And I'll show you the one that I've actually prepared in advance just to save us some time because I wanna show you some tips and techniques that we learned about getting the crystals into the neck wrap and some efficient ways to do that. So we're, we wanna make sure we're getting as much as we can out of the bag of that without having any waste. You can make one of these neck cooling wraps and it only takes one and a half teaspoons. This bag will make so many of these, um, it's amazing. It doesn't seem like a big bag, but the yield is huge. So looking from the overhead camera, and looking at here, let me just turn that around so it's matching our site picture here. We have the fold here and our red, raw edges are at the top. And let me repeat that here. And just to save us some time, what you'll do here is you'll sew the end closed as well as down this long side. So you basically have created a tube. So we're at this place. I'm, Want to step away so you can see that. Let's put that away for now. Now, sometimes it's like, how do you turn this through? The Turn It All Tube Turner is an amazing um, and simple uh, innovation that is ideal for th turning any tube through, especially if you like working with dolls when they have these really thin legs. Notice we have three different sizes of the Turn All. We'll be using the largest. So that's the white, and I just have an extra one here, but you're getting all three in your set. So you'll take the side, the end rather, that is sewn closed, and you just wanna open that up and kind of tuck that in, and your tube can help you. And you'll start by bunching the fabric around the tube. Let me get my fingers wet here. And get this process started. Now the, the wooden dowel, once you get started, you'll just push this through. And I like to kind of push it against my belly. Seems to kind of stabilize it. Gives me almost a, an extra hand. And then I just feed 
this through. And that is the fastest way to really turn it through. I love that. Just like that. And then you can just drop the elements right out the opening. We found that the wooden dowel, though, if you put that back in at the very end, it helps you push out those corners. So it does a nice job of not only being our plunger, but also helping us really smooth that out. We'll get everything pressed out nice and flat. I can just envision making these like almost on a production level. <laughs> I know that um, I'm gonna have a lot of people asking me about these. It's been over 100 degrees here the last week. And I was recently in Arizona, and I know that you're like, that's not a big deal. Like, it's over 100 degrees for many months in a row. So I imagine you might really enjoy these. So give it a press. And the press is not that important. I just want to make it flat so we can move on to the next step where we're going to do some marking. And I'll call your attention to our download real quick. Let me get this out of the way. So looking at our download here, we've got our open end on this side and our closed end. So let's go ahead and mimic that. That's our open end and our closed end. We're going to find the center. Just give that a quick fold to establish that center. And we're going to mark that center. I have both a white marking pen or chalk, whatever you want to use. And I'm just going to draw a line there. If you want to be very precise, by all means, you can put a ruler down and draw that line. That's my center. Now I'm just going to mark three inches to the right and three inches again and three inches again, three times to the right and three times to the left of that. So let me get that done and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now you can see we have everything marked and ready to go. Thinking about this, we know that these, these amazing water storing crystals are in each of these sections and it makes it so comfortable around your neck. You wouldn't want that to be in one big section. And by the way, that three inches, that's not, that, if you want four inches, or maybe you want six and do whatever you'd like. We just like the three inches. Um, but again, there's nothing specific about that. What is important, however, is you definitively know this is my opening that needs to be over there on my left. My closed end is on the right and we need to start sewing right here. And I'm going to sew on a very shortened stitch length because I'm now establishing that very first section we're going to sew here and then we're going to insert some crystals in this section and then we're going to sew again that's how we're making our compartments so join me over at the sewing machine i have a much shortened stitch length and we're going to sew across that at least one time or you can just simply start back stitch stitch across and back stitch again but go ahead and meet me at the machine Okay, that is well secured, as they say. Go ahead and trim that. Now, one thing that we discovered is if you just have your watering crystals and your quarter inch teaspoon and you drop them in the opening and you try to shake them down, they tended to cling on to the walls of the fabric kind of on their way down. And you might get watering crystals in this section. And notice this is very flat out here. For that reason, we wanted to go into this compartment 
and drop the crystals specifically there versus letting them travel all the way down and hoping they arrive there. So for that reason, I found a dual purpose for the tube turner. Now we have to be very careful about that um, because it's not a huge opening. If that bothers you, you could get a funnel. You could also get a, uh, um, it's like a vinyl tube, Home Depot, Lowe's has those, where you're just gonna feed that down there. But let's, let's see about our dual purpose here, tube turner, where I just am gonna take that all the way to that line I just sewed. And now with my quarter in, a uh, quarter teaspoon, I'm gonna drop these in there. And I, if you kind of cup your fingers around that, you can guide that right in there. I lost a crystal. I think I'll be okay. I'm gonna put, I'll go, I'm gonna put a couple in there. A couple more, just for good measure. There we go. Isn't that fantastic? Now, we'll remove that. I'm gonna tap, and what I love about this, it's so slippery. They're just gonna slip right through and not cling. Push them all the way down, and we will head over to that machine, and I can faintly see my line, but let me sew the next compartment. Okay, and of course we're gonna trim our threads. Tube goes in, the next quarter inch teaspoon, and we keep repeating that process until we have filled up all six of our sections. We close that, and then of course, in the very end, we will bring our opening and simply close that with an eighth inch seam allowance. Isn't this cool? I thought this was such a practical um, and fun project to make. Obviously a wonderful gift, and like I said, once someone sees you using one of these, they're gonna be like, where do I get that? And so get ready to make a bunch of those. Thanks so much for your time. If you haven't already subscribed, please do that. We always have fun projects coming your way and we look forward to sharing our newest creations with you here from Shabby Fabrics. I'll see you soon.